and I vowed from that day that I would always own my own pub, you know, and carry on the family name. I had guns pulled on me. I think, you know, people get this impression, yes, I've done well over the years. You know, my kids are not going to go hungry. I'm not some sort of multi-millionaire. I was trying to split up a fight that was outside and um, I ended up with a guy's tooth in my hand. They told me when they put me under, when I come out of the operation, maybe not expect to have my arm. So, Mams Taylor, this fits. I'm, I'm ready when you are. Guys and welcome back to the Blue Tick Show, season two, all about crime. Opposite me today, we've got Adam Brooks, aka new bar owner, aka the man that everyone talks about having one of the best nightclubs in Loughton. Uh, no, yeah, it was a bar, yeah, late yeah. night bar. How yeah. was it owning that? Yeah, did you enjoy uh, it? It was good times and bad times there, you know. Um, six years I had it, 2006 to 2012. Nice, and I'm Probably expecting you lot sitting there watching this thinking, what in the world have you got Adam on here for all about crime? A lot of you don't know, Adam's had a very interesting life, let's go with. Yeah. And I guess you're all just going to be sitting here enjoying the journey of it. So Adam, nice to meet you firstly. Nice to meet you, mate. Let's throw it back to your childhood yeah. and what brings you to having one of the most successful nightclub, but most successful bars in Essex that has now been sold. Yeah. Obviously, you've got the pubs I've and had a few that. venues over the yeah. years. I've had bars, clubs, restaurants. I've got two pubs now. But okay. what brought me to this industry, I suppose, um, I mean, I grew up above pubs. It was my way of life. You know, yeah. I've lived above three now. Over three pubs? Years. Yeah, in you know, my you younger probably years. Probably didn't get much sleep then. No. <laughs> and, and I was funny enough, I was speaking to someone the other day about the smoking ban, and I, I remember my bedrooms used to just fill up with smoke from beneath. Like, you know, memories like that yeah, yeah. growing up, not good. But, um, yeah, look, I um, I lost my dad at 11. My dad was murdered oh, when wow. I was 11 years of age. Um, and I vowed from that day that I would always own my own pub, you know, and carry on the family name. So, you know, I made that my mission throughout my teens and, and my early 20s that that was going to happen. That was my two fingers up at the people that did it and took took my dad away from me, you know. And was that due to the pub scene or was that something um, completely different yeah i don't want to go too much into it but there, there was a problem at the pub and my dad stu stood up for his morals he was a good man good honest man but he was a very tough man as well um he was a gentleman out of the east end box for england great britain so he could handle himself yeah, I can imagine. and you know he embarrassed people that didn't appreciate being embarrassed and that was um, like 11 years old 11 years old a week later they come back and killed him machete gang wow and that's probably all in the news anyway. People are listen. That, that was uh, for for a good few months after. Um, I would my mum protect, protected me as a kid. She told me it was a car crash. It was, you know. Oh wow! And it was only an older cousin told me what had happened, and it was all over the news and that. But look, I, I carried that for many years, even into my twenties. You know, and even now, certain things I think, ah, oh, I do that because of of that. You know, you yeah. know. It. I think with all this mental health sort of issues and that going around, I think at the age of 11 to 25, if we had that back then in the 90s and 2000s, I probably should have spoke to someone. Yeah, it would have been a lot different. You would have got the help that right, you needed but there at that I'm age. Not, you know, I, I think I'm a strong person. You deal with things different ways. But when I look back at certain things that I've done wrong or, or mistakes that I've made over the years, I, I attribute it to those years where I bottled things up, didn't speak to people. And what age you did know? you open your club? Your um, pub, 25 sorry. I took the lease. Of that was bar. the first ever pub slash bar yeah. you opened? I was working in the city for a few years before and it just weren't for me. You know, I, I, didn't, I didn't enjoy it too much. I gave it a go, but my, my, my life's dream, as I said, was to own my own pub or bar. So you opened up New Bar? Yeah, and it was, it was wild. It was, <laughs> you know, I, I, I told you earlier, we, I had England footballers. Yeah that ended up texting me on a, on a weekend saying what the girls like in there tonight. And they would drive an hour to come down. I had groups coming from Surrey, you know, different counties. It, it was mad. I had queues outside. Um, there was some good years there. You know, it was a real good, good bar. And it, it was probably, apart from the Sugar Heart, it was probably the biggest name yeah, venue in, in Essex, you know? It was before my time. I was a lot younger then, but... Yeah. Everybody, brother's sister, was going to Newbar. It was yeah. the, it was the spot in Essex. Yeah. Everyone uh, was look, going. The timing was right. I was in my twenties. I knew what I wanted. Going how out. was it being so young, owning this smashing bar? Again, you know, a it lot. must have hit you. Like, it, it yeah, must have I weren't been very, ready for it. I was about to say, I yeah. weren't ready for it. Um, I, I've got a son. He's 
13 now, I would never want him going into this industry. <laughs> For many of the stories that maybe we, we cover today, I, I, I would not want him in this industry at all. What's going on, guys? This video is being brought to you by Morris Andrews Solicitors. As you're all aware, we've done a season two all about crime. If you watch that all and you're in any situation like that and need help getting out of the situation, reach out to Morris Andrews Solicitors and see if it's something they can help you with. Remember, there's a defense for every offense. As much as there's bad times with that, there was good times. You must have loved it. I loved it. I mean, to be fair, I've I've been with my with my Chloe since you know I was 18, she was 16. Oh, so wow. I had that grounding around me. But it could have gone so wrong if I didn't have that grounding. So, so many you know, distractions. Everyone distraction, but in all all sense of of life, you know, I could have become flash. I could have had supercars at the time. I was doing well. Yeah. You know, that was a a, a profitable time in my life. Um, she kept me grounded. I wouldn't have anything if it weren't for my wife. She she's the one that puts me in check. She's the one that say slow down a bit. You know what I mean? Um, but and was there any bad times in Newbar? There's some very bad times. You know, um, I I had guns pulled on me. Oh, really? Yeah, I had. Um, Shit. So it, weren't, to, it weren't no joke then. It was no joke. I grew up fast. You know, I had many a problem. I I would I would take on. I would take it personally if someone caused a problem in there because it was everything that I owned. It was your baby. It was, yeah. it was your life. It was your it whole... It was. Any, any money that I ever had, I'd put into that business. It was my baby. So, you know, my doorman used to say to me, stop getting involved. What are you doing? But it was personal, you know. Yeah. And I, you know, I threw people out, people out that, that were known, known, known gangsters. And I had problems. I did have problems. But I fronted it, you know. It was... Um, it wa it wasn't it wasn't a great time. I got arrested. Um, there was one night in there when when a guy caused a problem. Thought he was a tough guy. Doorman were away doing something else, and I had to remove him. Mm. And the guy was badly hurt. Um, fair enough. Badly, badly hurt. He, his arm snapped. To be fair, and the police are outside, and I spent almost 24 hours in the police cell. What was the outcome of that? Um, I was charged with GBH, and I spent a year on bail. You got charged. Yeah, got charged. I was um, I was on bail for a year. Um, I just had a baby. I think my baby was like four or five months old at the time. Oh shit! My so it must have been life changing to get so. Put in bail. I was looking at losing everything over one incident, you know, and I wasn't in the wrong. Um, and I ended up at Chelmsford Crown Court. I had to take a barrister there. I had a bag packed to go prison. Me and my wife, you know, sitting there. Uh, luckily, got found not guilty. Um, you make that seem a lot more, a lot more easier than it was. Yeah, Let's dive into that a little bit because that that must have been a time in your life where time. where your whole life changed. The whole life, everything changed. you had your for for an hour, you know, thirty minutes of madness. I was looking at losing my business. You know, not seeing my kids for two years or whatever it yeah. would have been. You know, not seeing my wife, losing everything, losing everything, and it was you know it brought me down to earth a lot. You know, I, thankfully I got off um, because I hadn't done anything wrong, yeah. you know, but it was a tough time. And how did the, obviously your partner cope with that? That must um, have been hard for her as well because... We was married, the like we'd already been married then. Yeah, my wife, my wife was terribly upset. You know, I'd have the local paper. Um, I think they run the story about three or four times. Because you was the little celeb in, in Loughton in Essex. You was the known man. Uh, you had a, you, you're it, it was a bar where everyone would go. Look, so you're very everyone humble would in know it. me. You're very humble in it. And I can tell that already we've been speaking for 10 minutes. Right. You're very humble and you don't ever want to take credit for what you've done. Right. You was the man in Loughton. Utter. Everybody knew you. Anyone you can't they say knew me. I wasn't the man, but you look, can't say you wasn't. People wanted a good Every, night out. They come, knew to they, come to they, your they place. They knew they'd come to me. And and look, back then, you know, I was drinking. Back then, it was fun. My wife would have our friends there. We'd have friends of friends there. We'd have footballers. Yeah. You know, um, we used to have celebrities from all over come down. You know, and it, it was great. There were some great times. It must have been some, stressful. There were some bad being, times. Being yeah, the yeah, boss yeah. is a, it's not easy. I can no. imagine, but. but I can tell that that you're, you're so passionate about that. You loved yeah. all that, and like you said earlier, you done it on to carry on your family name. Yeah, yeah, to have yeah. Your thing. I, I vowed to do that as a kid. And, and, and then how did dream. you go to having the pubs? What happened there? What's going on, guys? If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you scroll down. We're now live on Spotify, so you can watch us while you're driving, listen to us, listen to us while you're in the gym. Pretty much just listen to us anywhere, and make sure you give us a five star review on Spotify.
Thank you. So I sold Nubar in 2012. Someone come along and why did you sell it? Wanted to buy. It. I mean, I've been there six years. I felt it was the peak. I could feel, I could feel like nightlife was changing in Essex as well. It was getting a lot more violent. Yeah, that's um, true. There was there was nightclubs being closed down, bars being closed down, and I thought, you know what? If I can get out of the top, might as well. I'll get out of the top. And luckily, the the right person come along and and, and bought it. Um, I had a few months, few months out, and then. I got dragged back in. I didn't want to go back into pubs, and but I want I wanted that to be it. Yeah. But I I, I got dragged back into what I know. Uh, I took a pub in Bucker Steel, the Three Colts. Yep. Real nice. And and what sort of happened was, a lot of my friends that are the same age, they were past going bars and clubs. Now they wanted pubs. They wanted pubs. So, so a lot of my crowds, man. it was like an evolution. You know, a lot of my new bar crowds started coming to the pub. Because everyone had grown up a little bit. Yeah. And uh, it was a bit more of an easier life, you know, and uh, I've still got the pubs. I, I enjoy my mum works for me. How many you got now? Two. Two pubs? Yeah. And is there anything, would you ever sell them? I, I would say that every business is for sale at the right price, but I, I generally love my pubs. I love my staff. You know, my, my mum works for me. Yeah, that's priceless. You know, um, I take my kids down there on a Sunday for Sunday roast. It's part of our life still. Um so at the moment, no, but you know, down the line, who, who knows what happens? Everything but, has a price, like yeah, you do say. Exactly, Adam. As much as we've touched on a few points here, mm. we haven't even touched anything yet, right? And you know that there's plenty we discussed before we jumped on filming. There's so yeah. much more to your life that no one knows. Yeah. So if we can dive into the part about where Twitter took off for you, because right. you're not a small man on Twitter. No, that, listen, <laughs> you've got a, you've got a fair few followers. I set up Twitter in 2009. I see it uh, and it and it sort of got me. I thought, blimey, you know, your average person can actually start talking to people that you see on the telly. You know, it, it's it's a way in to yeah. talk to people, MPs or celebrities or whatever. And I, I looked at it and I thought that is an unbelievable idea. And it, it weren't big at the time, 2009. None of my friends were on it. If yeah. anything, my friends were taking the mickey out of me. <laughs> what are you doing now? What are you putting your life on Twitter for? And... You know, even my wife said, what are you doing? She doesn't really like social media. She's quite private. Yeah. And, you know, I come come up with this idea of videoing a lot of the crowds in the new bar, taking pictures of the celebrities, you know, posting them on Twitter, posting yeah. the videos. No one was doing it at the time. And it just blew up. Suddenly I was getting tens of thousands of followers. You know, suddenly Towie come along. All the Towie people come into the into the bar because that's when Taui was really at its peak yeah now it's not as big as it was no. I believe but Taui was back then well Ta Taui become a bit of a phenomenon yeah. you know and um, I used to let them film in there they asked me to be on the first four series oh really I, I, didn't, I know I'm on the telly now but I didn't want I didn't want fame I didn't want to be in the public eye yeah. so I turned them and they used to drive me mad and why Taui. did you not want that I didn't want that but you know the, what, what the, was the businesses were doing it? well I was half capitalising on the Towie people coming. I used to have buses turn up from people from Wales because nah. they thought they might see Amy Childs or Seriously? Arge or Joey or Mark Wright, you know. It was crazy. Um, and I'm friends, I'm friends with a lot of the Towie. Tommy Mallet is a, yeah. a dear friend of mine. And so is Arge. You know, there, there's some good people on there. Um, but... The Twitter, it just blew up and through them joining Twitter and... Uh, it blew you up more. I, got, like I ended up getting like, effect. Yeah, I got like 100,000 followers oh, shit, in a couple many? of years. Yeah. That's I mean, I've got a lot Twitter more now. Big. Yeah, yeah, now. For different reasons, you know. So, but I used to... I've never paid for advertising for Nubar or my pubs or whatever. It saved me a fortune. Of course. In advertising. It's free advertising. It's free. So, a lot of the time, social media for me was part of the business. It's evolved now and I go into politics and I talk about all sorts. But well, now you're like a media icon, media. You're an influencer in the sense in the media world. Yeah, I w I've got to say, I see all the, the things that the Instagrammers get for free and all these <laughs> programs, that they, all the money that they get. I wish, I wish I'd done Instagram yeah, instead. Literally. Twitter has opened doors for, for, for a lot of reasons. You know, I get to, I get to speak to MPs, yep. celebrities. Um, it helps my businesses. It's got me on the TV. Yeah, you're on the TV you now. Know, for people that don't know, yeah, you're on TV. Yeah, every every Wednesday, Dan Wilton tonight, nine to eleven. Um, but again, what that show is about is about all. 
it's really what I was tweeting about anyway, about everyday life, politics that affect your average person. Yeah. Why is that happening to us? COVID. COVID you know, was a massive thing. And that's what, that, COVID, that helped I, your Twitter. Look, COVID, I, I don't care what people think of me. If I, if I want to rant, I'll rant. And I started ranting a lot during COVID <laughs> because what the government was doing to us was just wrong. It was just wrong. You're in hospitality. So I've become an almost unofficial voice for hospitality. And it didn't, didn't mean to go that way, but it did. And my Twitter blew up. And what, how many followers did you two, gain? I've got, oh, I've got 272,000 now. Wow. So you I gained get, over. I get like 3 million profile hits a month. Which is scary, you know, because I didn't set out for that reason. But during COVID, you know, I was terrorising MPs to the point where I was being brought up in cabinet meeting, like, uh, documents. I've done a uh, freedom of information request. You know, I was noted as a pain in the arse to the government. That's a good thing. Yeah. As much as you piss the government off. Yeah. But clearly they were getting pissed off because you were saying things that were yeah. affecting them. It was but the truth. On, on the other hand, I, I had MPs reach out to me to join, sort of, can you put that out? Oh, they, you did? Yeah. So other in government, they don't all agree. No, of course not. And I had a lot of MPs that would reach out to me and say, keep saying that, it is wrong what's going on. So I would. I, and I didn't really care what anyone thought Because it me. affected your life massively. Massively. You I could have lost hospi- both pubs. You're in the hospitality and trade. I think, you know, people get this impression, yes, I've done well over the years. You know, my kids are not going to go hungry. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm not like some of these other, you know, hospitality. I'm not some sort of multi-millionaire, you know, that's got Lamborghinis or got Ferraris. Or, I'm a family man. Yeah. That if they'd kept us shut much longer, it would have affected I probably would have lost my businesses, sold my house, started again. You know, I, d- I don't think... I don't think people get that. Hospi- I'm about to say, know. a lot of people don't actually understand how bad it did affect some people. Yeah. Of course, some people lost family members, and I can completely understand that. Yeah. But some people were losing their whole life. Yeah. Like, if you had lost your two pubs, you might have gone into depression. You might uh, It might have ruined Look, your dur- marriage. During COVID, I was a big advocate of mental health because I know what locking people in their houses does to people. You know, gyms being closed. Gyms being everything. closed. It, it was it, was, it, it was madness, but they, they'd keep the fast food restaurants open. But they'd tape off benches. You know, and that's the sort of thing that I would rant about. And, and that is the sort of thing that I thought, you know, we can fight back here. I joined a group called Together Declaration. Yeah. And um, we fought back about vaccine mandates. I'm not anti-vax. I'm against people being made to do stuff that they don't want to do. Against having to show a pass to get into a pub or a restaurant, that was never going to happen. You know, I would have refused to do that. Yeah. Um, we got 300,000 signatures, I think, and we delivered it to uh, Downing Street in 2002. And then they dropped all, all talk about vaccine mandates again and um, vaccine passports. That's good. So clearly so we, we, we did make we, we did make a difference, without doubt. You know, and I just... That wasn't because I wanted anything from it. It was to protect my businesses... It was to protect what was right. You know, can you imagine a life like China where you have, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. You have to show a barcode to go on the bus or in you, a restaurant? If someone told us five years ago in 2000, and, it was 20. Yeah. 2020, that we're going to all be locked up in our houses. We'd all laugh. Yeah. We'd all laugh and say, no. What ugh. happened really was a disgrace. And look, I'm, I'm not going to lie. For the first three weeks of, of what was happening and when they locked us down, my mum was ill. Okay. She had COVID. So for three weeks, I was sort of wrapped up in it. Yeah, listen, if we close down for a month, oh, I was on board. Yeah. But after a month, it was pretty obvious that what was going on they was wrong. They down for how long in total? Oh, it was too long. And the restrictions, I mean, oh, bullshit. it just kept coming back. It was unscientific. And again, through Twitter, I, I've become friends. I was talking to people that have advised governments, like scientific scientific level. And they were saying, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. You know? So... It's a mad world. It's a the mad go- world. Government want do what they want to do anyway. Right. No matter what. But there's a lot of mistakes. And now, you know, it, it's being highlighted that a lot of what happened during COVID was completely wrong. Well, I think it's come out that it's now classified as just a common flu, no? Um, it's more classified as a just a flu. You have to live now, with it. Now, because so many people have had it, so many people have been vaccinated. Or whatever, it doesn't affect. It doesn't affect people like 
they're saying it did in 2020. I've you know? never had COVID from what I'm aware of. I've had it four times. You're still here. You look well. <laughs> you look well. You look yeah. good to me. Thank you. But look, it's, um, I'm just pleased that's behind us. 100%. I, bec- I used to bore myself on Twitter talking about it, but I couldn't <laughs> stop. Like I would, I would say the same things every day and I would get so much hate from it as well. Would you receive yeah, it Yeah, I got as called well? a granny killer. Everything. Oh, wow. But Shit, it's an thick skin that, you know, I've stood on the doors of bars and clubs half my life. If I can take that, I can take someone yeah. shouting at me on social media. 100%. And I think no one understands the power of social media as yeah. well. You can become an overnight voice yeah. from one tweet. You can say one thing on there mm. that a million people agree with and now you're influential. Yeah. And I think you hit it right at the right time with the COVID thing because everyone heard about what you was doing yeah it was like a bit of an online protest but not really a protest it was that every day you know my wife would pull her hair out saying, <laughs> Can you just get off that phone but i couldn't let it rest and you probably had thousands of people supporting what you were saying yeah, as well yeah, yeah. as much as you got hate there must have been loads of people agreeing yeah, no, with there you. was yeah there was and i could see it was making a difference just even if it was a little difference yeah. you know even if it was helping one person but again you know, I want people to know I would bore myself. So I was obviously boring other people <laughs> as well. But I, I, when, when I get my head into something, I don't stop. It is what it is in that it situation. Is, I'm just glad that's behind us now. It was a tough few years. Tough few Well, years. we're out of it now, we hope. Yeah. We're out of that. What's going on in your life now? Well, I've still got the two pubs. Um, I've got three kids, you know, love dearly. Family's everything for me. Yeah. Everything I do is for my family. Um... And has it always been like that with your, was your mum and dad the same? Were they always very family oriented? Yeah, till I lost my dad, yeah. We were close, close family. Were your mum and dad together when you lost your dad? Yeah. They were? Yeah, but I was an only child as well. So, so that must have been very hard for your mum. Yeah, yeah, very hard. As well, my, you know, my mum lost a baby before I was born as well, disabled brother. So, oh, wow. so she, you know, she's had a hard life, my mum, but she's unbelievable. A lot of customers that go into the free cults going to see my mum, not me. <laughs> you know, she's a good host. That's but you know what it is when your mum's there and you're the backbone there to support her as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It changes the whole yeah. the whole concept of that so business. So my, my family said, but my, my dad took his first pub in 1964. Fuck me, it's years back. Yeah, here. in Bethnal Green, he had a pub called the Goldsmiths. Adam, before we come on here, we discussed a point where you got involved a few a few incidents at mm. New Bar. Is there any that stand out in your head? Look, any? it's impossible to have a business one, one that is your life and your baby and that is so busy, you know, full of people with alcohol and dancing and that without having problems. Yeah. You know, e- every venue has, has problems. And I'll run a tight ship, but I would take a lot of things personally. Uh, and if the doorman was struggling with something, I'd always help as well. Yeah. And there was a few incidences where, yeah, I had to get involved. I was, I'm never scared to get involved. You know, I think it's, I've probably got that from my dad. <laughs> you know, it, it, uh, I would always do what's right. And, and at the and end of the day, you're defending your business. You're de- yeah. defending your home. And my customers as well. Yeah. You've got to remember that the safety of the customers in your venue is, is down to you as well. Um, but yeah, there was a time when um, I was trying to split up a fight that was outside and um, ended up getting attacked myself, defending myself. I ended up with a guy's tooth in my hand. Ouch. Um, it ended up sort of fizzling out. Um, end of the night I showed showed it to one of my colleagues like uh, who worked for me at the bar and he said you've got to go to hospital like my, my hand was bad so um you was a bit of a man's man you were like nah forget that yeah shit, I'm yeah fine. yeah so I ended up in Whips Cross Hospital they cleaned it up sent me home but what they've done they stitched my hand yeah which later on I know it should never stitch oh, really? a wound where a human tooth has been um so my wife woke me up the next morning. She said, you don't look right, you've gone green. Oh shit. It's like, right, okay. And my, my, my arm had started swelling up. So I said, look, we'd better go back to the hospital <laughs> and see what's that. So I went back to the hospital. They gave me an injection yeah. and some tablets and said, you'll be fine. It shouldn't have been stitched up, but it is what sent it me is. home again. Four hours later, I almost pass out getting up. I am proper green now my arm is three times the size bright red hot my missus rushes me to hospital basically it's an emergency now uh cut a long story short they told me when they put me under 
that when I come out of the operation, maybe not expect to have my arm. That's actually what they said That's to you. That's how bad. And they said wow. another few hours, if it had hit, uh, I, I think it's under the arm, if it had hit there and been sent around my body, I was dead. All from having a... Yeah, defending wow. yourself on a punch. You don't ever think like just... No. So one second, all because his tooth was stuck in your hand. Yeah. And obviously due to probably bacteria and stuff. Yeah, right? it's bacteria. But they sewed, wow. they, they sewed it in. So obviously it didn't have, it weren't allowed to breathe. No. And whatever, it, I think it was blood poisoning that I got. So it weren't no fucking joke. No. So I nearly lost my arm and they said I could have died. You come out after the, what, what did they do when they put you under? Um, th I think they had to scrape all, all the poison and drain all the poison out. But it weren't nice. But and again, you, you was fine. Uh, you was know, that a that, quick recovery? Uh, I think it was a few weeks. That week, was you back on the door? The next week, I was back <laughs> on the door. But, you know, like, Work don't stop, does I it? I just want, you know, we talk about different things in this podcast. People assume that owning a bar or a club is glamorous. Some of the things we're talking about here today, I'm trying to point out, it's not glamorous. Yeah. I would never let my boy do this. And I hope if I'm around, I can steer him away from ever wanting a bar or a club. Because there's some parts of that life that are downright dangerous, you know. It's it and look, that was one wrong, I'm guessing, punch, and you yeah. nearly died. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. a joke. People and, say, and listen, there's there's no excuse for punching anyone. You know, I'm 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 a straight going fella. Don't want to be a gangster. Never have yeah. done. Don't want to be a face. Never have done. But sometimes it led to me having to defend my business or my customers. Yeah, you know, it happens. And at the end of the day, one thing everyone has to understand is it, it's one wrong move. One wrong move. From anyone. Can ruin your life. And your families. Your around family's you, life. Every, every, yeah. People who like you, people who have respect for you. Mm. It's, they, they would say there was, I can't remember where it was or who it was, but all it takes is one punch. There was the bouncer who punched someone, the yeah, guy listen. fell, smacked his yeah. head off the There's concrete, loads of stories and he passed that. away. It's, he, that guy weren't expecting to go, not go home to his family that night. No. Nah. It's, no, there's it loads is, of tragedies. Look, people, I think people trivialize trouble and you, you look at it uh, on films and things like that and think that's funny. Violence, there's nothing funny about violence. There's nothing cool or edgy about violence either. You know, and that's what I try and instill that with my, with my boys just started boxing as well. And it's about respecting people. Yep. Punching someone or defending yourself is the last result, you know? And I made many mistakes over the years. When I used to train, I used to train martial arts. I used to say to my coach, when you're young, yeah. you're like, how do I win a fight? How do I win yeah. a fight? And my coach used to say, run. Right. He goes, if you want to win, yeah. run. He goes, just run. Get away from there as quick as possible. Yeah. He goes, because all it takes, he goes, forget about winning the fight. He goes, what if you hurt him? What if yeah. you really hurt the guy? And then you go to prison for it. Yeah. And as a, as a young kid, you're always like, nah, I want to win. It's macho, I win. It? It's, it's macho. You want, you're yeah, growing up. Is, like, then, I, I'm 40 odd now. And the last thing I want to be doing is ever having any trouble. Of course not. It's you, not you want to make sure you're going home to your family at night, looking exactly after that. the family. And my family's my everything. Yeah. That's it. You don't give a shit about who's having a fight and all no. that bullshit. No. Don't get it twisted. I'm sure if it was on TV and it was a professional system, maybe. Maybe. But yeah. we can move on to that in a we'll little move bit. move on to that. <laughs> yeah. But look, we also discussed that you had home invasions. I've had some terrible things happening to me. Like, if my, if my life was a film... It'd be a blockbuster. Would, people, no, people would say it's too far-fetched. Seriously? I've got friends of mine that goes, only you, only that could happen to you, <laughs> or not you again. You know, the, the luck I've had over the years is terrible. I left the pub, 2015 it was, um, left the pub locked up, pulled onto my drive. I actually just gone and got a chicken burger from Loughton, <laughs> somewhere in Loughton. Was you the last one to always close your business? Uh, back in the day, yeah. yeah. I've got staff that do it now. But... Um, 2015, yeah, I pulled onto my drive. I just got a chicken burger from Loughton. I think I just finished the last bit in my car. As I got out, I walked to the front door, put my key in the door. Yeah. I heard running. I knew. Sick feeling, I knew what was coming. I turned around. I got four masked men running down the drive. My drive was at an angle yeah. like that. So I just remember thinking, like my kids, I had two kids uh, at that time and I just threw my keys as far as I could throw them in the darkness so I couldn't get in and they, they couldn't, couldn't force me to get in I yeah. know what they was trying to do they was trying to bundle me in the door so now I turned around I, I, I shut my eyes and I just started swinging caught a couple yeah 
thought, oh, I'm away here. Run through the middle and I just got clocked one. I just remember waking up, sort of half waking up on my drive. They're trying to drag me back to my front door. Where are your keys? They wanted in there. They thought whatever they thought was in my house, yeah. whether it be watches or money. But it was, you know, it seemed to go on for an eternity. But I'd always told my my wife, never open that door. We had we had like a reinforced front door as well at the mm -hmm. time. And I had a staff dog. I could hear him barking. But I always said, do not open that door. No matter Because that's what, what they want to get in there. I've got two kids. Yeah. Um, so I just remember... In the end, I think they cut a watch. They cut a watch off me. Guy cut my hand. I mean, it was jet black. All the neighbours were screaming. So um, this is probably about three, four in the morning, no? No, this was one in the morning. I wonder. Okay. One, one thirty in the morning. So I come home from the pub, but um, it's one of the most terrifying things because I knew if they got in my front door. It's four, not even about yourself. It's not caring. It's my, about, it's it's my kids, kids. You know, it's and um, as I said, to you, my family is my everything. So that changed my mindset. Back in those days, I'd have. A lovely watch, yeah. have a lovely car, it means nothing to me. I'm, I'm not doing as well as I used to do back then, so I haven't got that yeah. sort of money. But look now, you know, <laughs> I, I, I'll wear an eye, eye watch or something very understated. I don't want anything in my house. And that's not even because you can't get it. You probably no. can go out there afford whatever you look, want, but it's more about... It's, there's no upside to yeah. it. People are so jealous out there. People are so hungry for money. I've got two big dogs. You know, the safety, I've got massive gates now. Because everything is the safety of my family. And, and if it's me having a big flashy watch puts them in danger, I won't have it. Yeah. And I haven't got it now. There's nothing to come to my house for, you know. So it's a bad world out there. And it's and only going to get, it's only gonna get worse. It's only going to get No one understands no. the next five years. People are hungry. It, but now it's not, even, it's not even hit people yet. Yeah. Give it two, three years. We're going to have mayhem on the streets. Yeah, listen, I'm, I'm hoping things uh, improve uh, by uh, then. But hopefully. Look, but it is going to be tough. And listen, when people haven't got any, any money to feed their kids, they do desperate things. Yep. And they might be disgusting things, but they do desperate things. And, and I, I've had that. And anyone would. Yeah, and well, I, would. I, would never, I would never put a family, you know. No, of course, but when you're, when you're, if you need to put food on the table for your yeah, kids. people do desperate and disgusting things. It's not something... What, what them people that come to my house that night did, if they'd got in my house and my kids, they would never have recovered from that. Yeah. Never have recovered. It's, for me, it's one of the most disgusting crimes that someone can do. Especially when there's a family involved. When there's yeah. a family involved, it's wrong. And it's, and wrong. it's a problem. It's a big problem around here. And it's... Everyone is hungry. It's what yeah. it comes down to. Yeah. And people don't have no... They don't give a shit no more. But again, look. I mean, I, I got stabbed in the hand. They cut my watch off. I was on the front door. Uh, the funny thing was as well is, well, it's not funny, but the road was taped off and the rumours went round loud and, and the whole area that I'd been killed. Oh, wow. So my mum received text, my wife received text saying, sorry, I can't believe what's happened. Oh, shit. Which is mad. It's the rumour mill. You know, if something happens in this area, it's blown Sprints, up by 10. Yep. But I made sure... The next day, I was on that front door of the pub, as if to say, like with my dad, as I'm if to here. say, I'm still here. I might not be anything, and I'm not. I'm not a gangster. I'm not a tough man. But one thing I will do is I will show you I'm still here. Yeah. You know? well, that, that is that alone in itself yeah. is more than enough as well. Yeah. That says, you know what? Credit to that man. No yeah. matter who it is, no matter who them idiots were who tried to do what they done. Yeah. They sat back and they looked and thought, But let's, let's also, you know, let's, let's all, I was on that front door on many a times, worried, frightened. But you never let no one else see that. No. So let's not try and paint me out to be no, no, some tough not. guy. I'm standing on the front door of my pub. Oh, I don't care that I was stabbed the night before and all like that. Who cares? I was there thinking, Fuck. what am I doing here? But I've got to be here. You had to. You and, and that... and. It was a situation where it, you had to be there. I had to show face. Yeah. Because, again... And the customers as well. They yeah. knew you as a trust face. Yeah. They would come in knowing that there's not trouble here. Adam's there. Wicked. Yeah. So as much as you was there to show face, it was also... You had to keep your customers sweet. you got to remember as well, look, we did have a few incidents at Nubar when I did it. I had it 2006 to 2012. There was the odd bit, you know, yeah. and there was stuff that was out of your control. You couldn't do anything about. But... You know, I used to have the police praise me 
for how I run that. Yeah. And the council. You know, other places were getting shut down and I, I was all right because I was keeping... A tight ship. A tight ship. When I sold it in 2012, and this is no dig at the people that took it over, they run things differently to me. But it become mayhem. Some of the things that happened at that new bar after I sold it... They kept the name. They kept it, yeah. But they bought a brand, okay. which was the right thing to do. All right. You buy a brand... You know, they changed different things, but they just had so much trouble. And in the end, so I think a few years later, it was shut down, which uh, that upset me quite a lot because that was my baby. That was. That was my if baby. If someone offered it back to you back then, would you have taken it? No, no chance. No way. No. I walked out the door. After I sold it, I walked out the door and that was a chapter of my life that I was pleased to close. But now I do parties now. I do reunions. Oh, really? New uh, bar reunions? New bar reunions at Faces. Over 30s. Okay. For us old ones. So you're not allowed in yet. <laughs> not yet. Not but yet. yeah, I'll get 700 people. Oh, I'll do four me. a year. So and still, name still holds weight? It holds weight. It holds weight. It's, still um, well. and, and I'm not greedy. I do four a year. They're good parties. And I just want to keep it going. The school mums need somewhere to plan to go. <laughs> you know? It's, it's decent. And it's, it's all familiar faces to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every so I see people that used to come come in new bar at 21 22 yeah. you know now they're, in their, now they're in their late 30s or whatever yeah. you know it's, it's, it's do you know what it, it's good to see because some of my mates met their wives in new bar um and i used to stand in that dj believe it or not you know yeah. now you just said that my sister yeah and her husband yeah the other day she was scrolling through her facebook on and she had a picture of her in new bar right and in the back of the photo was her husband right before they even met yeah before they met before they knew each other that's mad. she looked at the photo he goes hey that's me and she was like fuck off yeah that's mad. didn't know each other nothing like that but like people met there you know and I, I used to stand in that dj stand and look when good times i think these people are having a good time yeah because i've done this there's no feeling better than that you know and now when i do these new do reunions it gives you that buzz back i stand in that dj stand i don't drink anymore but i stand there you know the nights are long now but i, I and i look around i think this is good these people are enjoying especially after the last three years where people weren't enjoying themselves yep. it's good to see you know good to see and it, it that buzz you get that must be amazing it's no? an when amazing you, when buzz. you're sitting there and especially when it's all familiar faces yeah. it's not and dealing with over 30s is so much easier and do you know what i think i've done six parties now all full up, six, seven hundred people. And I think we've chucked out two people it's, in those six pies. And they were, under they were women. That trouble. I can believe you know, that. They I can believe women, that. But at Touchwood, I haven't had any trouble, like, of any any worthiness. In that. I'm, it's, it's good. It's enjoyable. People, as they get older, yeah. they chill out a little bit. They're there just to have a good time. That's it. And they all want to go home to their kids and have a nice, get in bed early. Yeah. They're not there to cause trouble. Nah. It shows the it's biggest the, look, it's there. It's there. Their sort of night out, not I'd say once a year night out, but it's their, you know. It is, it's their yeah, one night yeah, they're yeah. not with the kids. It's the That's one night it. that no one's there. And I know can... that. Listen, you know, my, my wife does so much for our kids. They need a night out every yeah. now and then, let their hair down. So there was a part, Adam, where we just recently spoke about it, and you mentioned to me about you went to court regarding the GBH, you had yeah. your bags packed. How'd you get off with it? I know you didn't do it. Well, like, I know I, you said I, that, I, but how did you. I was on bail for 12 months. It was hell. And. Packing that bag, I remember packing that bag to court with my missus. There was a few tears, you know, because even though I knew I hadn't done what they was accusing me of, there was that risk that I could go away for three years. Yeah. So, I, I, my, my, my cousin's, um, he's a barrister's clerk, and uh, I remember asking, you know, I need the best. Yeah. And um, I, I rolled up to court. <laughs> uh, this guy was a fortune and again luckily back then I was earning better money than I do now and I rolled up to court with um, a barrister he was one of the top barristers in the UK massive cases and I remember sitting sort of on the benches in court the judge was looking at me I thought I'm in trouble she looks like yeah. a bright dragon and my barrister walks in he was six foot six <laughs> handsome like fella like real sort of character yeah and the judge looked round and her face it was like leonardo dicaprio had just walked in so he know? must have had a name in the in yeah. the in that circle he, he was, was like a showbiz dog. showbiz um barrister and she just totally changed the judge so 
I looked at my wife, I thought, this looks good. She said, um, we need 20 minutes uh, to talk to the councils or, or whatever. And they went out the back. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was a long wait. It was like 15, 20 minutes and I didn't know what was going to go on. You know, as I said, uh, there was a possibility that I could go away for this, even though I hadn't done it. And suddenly they came out and she turned around and she went, um, not enough evidence, this case is weak. I've spoke to Orlando, his name was Orlando Panel, yeah. massive barrister. And she went, not guilty, bang. And how long was the case? What? Like, how, how many court times, how long was the court case? We was only in there about half hour. It did, she didn't even start the proper proceedings. Oh, because shit. she realized who I had defending me, how weak the case was, and she, she just said it, it shouldn't be there. So, that must I have mean, been like... one, one thing as well, the guy that got injured, he, he wrote an 11 page statement on me. Meant to be a tough guy, threatening staff, threatening customers, you know, got removed from a bar, got hurt, and then wrote an 11 page <laughs> statement on me. You, you see know? how people change when. So, that's why I was worried. It was, it, you know, anyone would be. Yeah, of course. My baby, my baby boy was like six months old at the time. That's mad though. When you think about it, you're going in there. How my life could have changed. Yeah. If I'd gone in there, I would have lost the bar. I wouldn't have seen my kids. Who would have said, you know, my whole life would have collapsed. Yeah. But you didn't. I didn't. Look, you didn't. You're in a better place Made now. Made me stronger. You're now... Probably happier than you was then. Um, I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life. Uh, that's that is no amount of money. No, can put uh, can add up to that. No, happiness is it's priceless. It doesn't matter how much money you're making. When you're making that money, you have stress, you have yeah, headache. Yeah, yeah. You you're coming home, looking over your yeah. shoulder, thinking, "Fuck, who's coming?" Yeah. Now it's it's a different vibe. Different. You're my family's everything. You know, I, money money comes and goes. Yep. Who knows what I'm gonna go on. So yeah. I, I don't even know. You know, there's plenty of time. I'm not. I ain't got the money to retire, but <laughs> I might change course in the next yeah, few no years. No one knows. You no. don't know, do you? As much as you say you're old, yeah. you still got plenty years yeah, ahead yeah, of you. Yeah, yeah. And moving on to that, yeah. You say you're old. You say you're not ready to retire, and all of that. Yeah. So we were speaking earlier. I've been watching your Instagram. Yeah. You've been boxing a little bit. Yeah, so <laughs> in my, look, in my late teens, I, we spoke about earlier how my head weren't right yeah. in my teens. I was an angry, angry boy. Uh, and alcohol didn't help. Yeah, I was trouble. Never I does. was a problem when yeah. in my teenage years. And looking back, I'm embarrassed how I behaved a lot in my teenage years. And someone took me, a family friend took me down to a boxing gym. I think I was 19, 20. And we started training. And within three months, I was terrible. So... I thought I was a big man yeah. fighting all the time. You put someone like that in a ring, you get found out very, very quickly. Boxing's different. Boxing's different. Three months of training, and I was still terrible. I shouldn't have fought with <laughs> it after, I think. Um, I had a fight, and I lost. Um, Your ego collapsed. Yeah. Then I thought, you know what, I'm going to work on this. I had another four months training. I had another fight at the um, Circus Tavern. I'm telling you, lost again. I got strung up a little bit there. He was, he was heavier and he was a traveller out of Banger in Ireland. Good. But I drew. Okay. We're getting better. So We're getting better. I got, but listen, you know, I, I held my own. But looking back, when I look back at the videos, of, I was terrible. I, I really was. So I gave up. Yeah. 20 years later, my boy, 18 months ago, taking down a boxing gym in Lout and Dennis and Dyer, watching him train. Love it. He's getting a buzz. The trainers down there are great. Yeah. They've become friends of mine. Come on, you have a go. <laughs> so I've been training on and off for about a year, sparring. Broke my ribs in September, sparring someone down there. Broke three ribs. So I've had a few months off, but I'm, I'm back training You can't now. do anything about broken ribs, no. isn't it? I broke three of mine. So I'm still taking my boy down there. He, he's just got his amateur card. Whether he fights or not, I don't know. But That's good. I'm, I'm enjoying it with him, you know, that journey. Um, and it's the bonding as well. You're it's the bonding. You're bonding over. And I want him to be able to look after himself. And again, I want that respect talked to him by these people that I didn't get until I was 19, 20. I didn't have yeah. a father figure. Your mum can't teach you everything. Yeah. You know, and I missed that. Um, so he's being taught respect. He's a good kid. 
But yeah, I've been sparring and I've, I fancy, you know, I hold my own against some of these 20 year olds in there. I might, I wake up in the mornings, I'm putting Volta roll over my joints. <laughs> you know, I'm struggling to get out of bed. I've got hot water bottles on my neck, you know, but an opportunity may have arised. Look, if, if Misfits want me, the, the Misfits is um, the show that KSI fought, it, yeah. uh, fought on Saturday. Now I took my boy, all I can describe it, the hype and the, it's like a phenomenon. In the 90s, like the WWF wrestling. Yeah. These kids and, you know, families going to this show. It's unbelievable, the show that they put on. Yeah. So, funny enough, by, by chance, I get speaking to the people that run that. And I put my name forward. Okay. So, whether or not, look, I'm training. I said I'll fight any of them. Again, not because I think I'm good or I'm it's a big man. experience, though. I would love, I've got this dream of walking out to the music with my son with me and my son walking to that ring under the lights I mean there was about 15,000 people there on Saturday Packed. that's a buzz I mean look I could get knocked out I could get embarrassed it's just something I want to do yeah and I've got another angle as well I've been working um, I met a girl called Isla in the summer okay a young girl brought to my attention via Twitter um, got cancer it's a cancer called DIPG which when kids get that, you know, there's no rule coming back. Yeah. Beautiful little girl. And sadly, um, a few weeks ago, they buried her. Oh, wow. Now, I did a lot of fundraising for Isla yeah. on Twitter. I mean, my, f my followers are unbelievable. I think we took her from something like eight grand to 30 grand. And it was all so she could do things that she wanted Points. to do before she died. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I speak to her mum quite a lot on there. And... I've said, if I can go on one of these misfit shows, if they want me, whatever. There's a personal reasons why I want to do yeah. it. If I can go on there, I want to try and raise 10, 15 grand for these DIPG cancer charities and the awareness, because it, not a lot of people know about it, you know? And recent, uh, two days ago, someone messaged me and said, can you put this fundraiser out? It was another, it was a little boy that's got this. You know, it's, it's sad. But the fact you it's, do that as well to help the community, because it, it's... No one can ever Look, knock you for that, I'm, no matter I'm, what. I'm, I'm a father. I'm a father of three kids. They're my all. The thought of that happening to one of my children it's the worst thing is the a living nightmare. As I said, my mum lost my brother before I was born. It's a living nightmare for parents. Parents should never have to bury their children. So I'm quite passionate. So misfits, get me on the bill. I'm going to raise a lot of money for kids' charities. And bash up a couple of YouTubers. Well. <laughs> well, we're we're safe. Listen, hopefully it happens because yeah. the reason you want to do it is better if than it, half if the If it reason doesn't happen, do it. it doesn't. It wasn't meant to be. One hundred percent. Things happen if they're but meant I'm, to be. I'm just letting you know. So far, yeah. Everyone who's come on my show who's fought on Misfits has won. Right. Okay. So don't fucking let me uh, down. Don't let right. me down. Were they forty two as well? No, they wasn't. Right. But well, we'll see. We'll they, see. They yeah. haven't let me down as of yet. Yeah. So but I mean, it's four three minute rounds. So that's tough. Yeah, but you get it. Yeah, you we get see. there now. You're not. I'm hoping you're not looking to go be in there the whole four minutes, the whole three rounds. Nah, I'll put them away in the first round. That's more like it. <laughs> he says that. Don't let that. Yeah, be, don't yeah, don't no, let that no. be a video. That no, so, Mams Taylor, this fits. I'm I'm ready when, when you are. You know. Well, listen. Let's see. Let's see. They uh, they have a, f a show every three four months, right? Yeah, look, it is what it is. There's a lot bigger influencers out there than me. You know, I've come on here. I'm I'm oh, I'm big on Twitter. You know, I'm yeah. a Twitter name, but. I'm not so big on Instagram. So if you want to follow me, it's Adam Brooks Media all your, on there. All his socials will be in the description. Scroll Thank down, you. give him a follow on his Instagram, Twitter. What else you want? I've started a TikTok, funny enough. TikTok and as my well? kids are horrified. I'll make right? sure I tag you in but, all of these. I mean, uh, I've tweeted before about TikTok, about dancing and parents embarrassing that. I don't do none of the dancing and that. I normally put my media clips up on yeah, there. That's what I do. I just and, take... and if I'm a little bit controversial, which I can't, people that follow my Twitter, and my, I only say what I believe in. But, sometimes that can offend <laughs> and I don't mean to offend but, no, but it you can. know it's it's, it's what, you what a lot of people are thinking but they don't want to say yeah and that's what I'm known for I think but I put them videos on TikTok one's just had 600,000 views I think which Wicked. is all right. amazing I just need followers now TikTok's the best app in the world TikTok is I've got to say it's quite addictive when you're scrolling through there's some mad stuff on there when I'm laying in bed and I'm sitting there scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling my missus hates me
Oh no, mum, mum, she mum genuinely... misses is a widow to Twitter, she... and now she says she's got other things to worry about. She... I'm sitting laying in bed, yeah, and it's how I fall asleep. I'm scrolling. I watch little clips, clips, clips. Yeah, but clips. It, it, it grabs you. I, I had someone pulling a worm out of their ear or something I've one for of about them. 45 seconds. I get to the end, it didn't even get pulled out. I've watched ones like I've, that. I've looked at myself and think you're a forty odd year old man. I've watched part ones of video of movies. Yeah, and I'm and by the end of it, I'm like at part eighteen. I'm thinking I might yeah. as well put the fucking but movie it, on Netflix. Listen, this is the danger of social media. It's addictive. Yeah, it is. And again, where I, I might moan, my wife's right. I should have logged off a lot of times <laughs> on, on Twitter. It can take over your life. It can, and once you get caught up in that bubble. Yeah. So during COVID, I was very big on Instagram. I was yeah. Instagram lives every single day. Mm. And it comes to a point where my dad looked at me and was like, son, wake the fuck up. Yeah. Like, Live your life. Not, you, he, not goes, for he goes, you're else. living in a yeah. bubble. Like, You're yeah. literally every day nice going words. live. You're, And I thought to myself, now I look back at it, I was like, what was I doing? But yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah? listen, listen. So you can't, I enjoyed it, I can't take it away from it myself. Did it do any harm? The, the, the only thing I will say, you know, I'm trying to limit my voice 13. I've said it a few times, but you can't, like this modern era, we'd go out and play. Or we'd go out and mix with our Even friends. Even me, I was out on my and bike. If, if you leave 13 year olds to their own devices, they'd be in their rooms on their phones all day. When I know? was 13 years old, I was the local mechanic of my area. Right. The boys would come around with their BMXs, yeah, yeah, I'd yeah. fix the brakes, I'd fix it all. Now, my little brother is, my mum don't let him leave the house. Yeah. My mum says to him, you're not leaving, go play yeah, your PlayStation. Even like, we're going off key here, but even like <laughs> with social, social media is the down, you know, it's caused the collapse of nightclubs. Yeah, probably massively. and bars because people don't need to go out and buy girls drinks or chat girls up anymore they can swipe yeah. you know it's that easy it's cheaper it and is, it's less it's, and it's one swipe away to, to but it's scary our society is going that way less interactions it's all on the phone I think yes. we've got to start pushing back a little bit now and listen I'm, I'm the biggest hypocrite with my phone I'm always on it I do everything on my phone literally you're probably going to be on your phone in about three minutes' time thinking, yeah, shit, yeah, he's texting. Yeah. Or I put on airplane mode so I don't <laughs> interrupt it. I'm thinking how many WhatsApps I'm going to have. So, look, we've discussed a lot of your life here. Yeah. We've discussed many parts where a lot of the viewers are probably thinking, fuck me. Yeah. Like, it's not it's not an easy life you've lived. Well, look, I, I, sometimes I'm, I'm on telly. I've got my specs on and my nice blazer. <laughs> and I think there's a lot of maybe Twitter and people that watch that and think, oh, he's probably born into money. You know, lived a privileged, real... Listen, I have lived privileged yeah. parts of my life, you know. But there's been tragedy. There's been heartbreak. There's been, you know, some real bad situations that could have ended it. Yeah. So I'm just here to tell a story, really. I think you look at someone and you, you never know what they've been through or why am I angry in certain situations? Why? Oh, it's because of that. I say as well, a lot of people... You know? only show their good times yeah 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 but no one i'd say 99.9 percent of the viewers on here watching this from my mm. platform have no idea what you've been through no nope. they might have heard of new bar they might yeah, have heard yeah, of yeah. the club might have heard of you on twitter but no one knows a story about your dad passing away no nah. no one knows about the story of you nearly going prison yeah no one knows the story about you, know, you getting robbed at your front door yeah people don't hear that side no nah. and it's good. That's why I love doing podcasts. It gives yeah. people a platform but to come on. That's the mad thing is that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going for dinner um, within the next couple of weeks and I'm going to be sat there with some big politicians. Yeah. I've been invited to it. Now, as this so-called people, some people will look at me as, I suppose, an oik. <laughs> you know, an Essex boy. As this Essex boy, I'm being put in situations I shouldn't, where people think I shouldn't be. Yeah. But obviously bring something to the table. Otherwise you wouldn't Maybe a bit there. of real life, a bit of experience, you know. They want to hear that. Views from people. I listen to a lot of customers, you know, and I, I think a lot of my politics comes from talking to people and actually listening. Whereas these MPs, they might go on a coffee morning with, you know, Jude and whoever, Aunt Flo, and think that what they're saying relates to what me and you go through in life. Yeah. It doesn't. But the thing is, as well, clearly there mm. is some fact in what you're saying. Otherwise, you wouldn't be invited to them dinners. No, no, no. You wouldn't be sat yeah, at look, that table. I'm, I'm wrong on certain things. I hold my hands up and say, you know, maybe some of my views are, are not mainstream. Some of, but they're your most views. Of them, most of them are. Most, I, I, I would say most of what I say on Twitter and on the TV 
is what people are thinking but won't say. That, that's a lot of the problem nowadays you as know, well. Because people are scared to offend. Now, if I think something's wrong, I'll say it's wrong. Yeah. You know, it's black and white in my book. Don't keep dancing in the middle, in the grey areas, because things are just going to get worse. If you don't talk about things, things get worse. But the difference is, is you're in a position now where you are lucky mm. enough where yeah. you, you, you can be put in these rooms. People are inviting you out yeah. to these dinners and what you're saying, it may not be right 100% of the time, maybe uh, listen, not. I'll get things wrong. But what you are saying is clearly right, more times right than wrong because yeah. you wouldn't be sat at them tables. I've never been invited Look, to a table like that. I wouldn't be. I, I, I'm on a TV show, I say, every Wednesday night. Yeah. I wouldn't be invited on there every Wednesday if what I was saying yep. was far out there or didn't relate to what people people think, you know? So and you're on TV every single Wednesday? Every Wednesday. And do you enjoy that? Love it. Love and it. what is next in Adam Brooks's life? Again, as I said, I don't know. I, my, my, my main priority is my family, my two businesses, my pubs. It's been tough the last three years. Yeah. You know, I want to try and sort of kick on with those. Yep. I hope GB News keep me on. I hope Misfits let me box. <laughs> um, is there anything else you want to do business-wise? Um, business-wise, I always had this dream of being on the radio. And the reason why I, I, I like media and that, yeah. but part of that was that people weren't looking at you. But the only thing with radio now it's is bit, that everything, like, like the podcast, everything's got a camera in it yeah. now. I think people, like even me, I had a, there's a gent in Australia he wants to do a podcast with me. Yeah. And he goes, can we do a voice one? Uh, audio. Audio one. And me, myself, I don't actually watch podcasts. No. I actually don't. I do podcasts. Yeah. I don't even watch my podcasts over before yeah. I release them. Yeah. I watch, I do scan for them, obviously, to make sure all good. But yeah. everybody wants a face to match the voice. Yeah. Even, I can't listen to, if I'm, if I am listening to a podcast, I want to watch it. Yeah. I want to see that person's facial expression when he says, my mum passed away for yeah, example yeah, i yeah. want to see, see the emotion, emotion yeah. in his face and it will yeah. help you in like helps you watch it and understand it where audio is a lot more i don't know i think well, it's you, faceless isn't it it's yeah it's, it's yeah it's, it's, there's, there's less emotion to it but look, i don't know if i'm honest i've got to a point in my life where i love my pubs i love my my staff you know i i, I want to carry on with those but i don't know what my long term you know you're just going with the flow. I go with the flow. I want to, I got you, had, you had enough stress years yeah, ago. I've got, got to pay for Christmases and birthdays <laughs> with three children. Do you know what I mean? So, look, Adam, before I get any guest on here, yeah, I do my research. I need to know who I'm talking to and what I'm discussing, of oh course. Oh, God, I hate to think what you've found on Google. Go me. Googled your name. Yeah. And a picture of you and Big Nasty pops up with him holding a shotgun. Right, okay. How have you ended up with Big Nasty with him holding a shotgun? It's a long story. Now, we go back to New Bar. we we got time, don't worry. Yeah, we go, we go back to the New Bar. I forget what year it was. It was about 2012, I think. All right. So about 10, 11 years ago. And someone come to me um, and said, um, could we film a movie, yeah. a film in, in the bar? I said, obviously, it's got to be a Monday or a Tuesday or something. But yeah, yeah, listen, you can film that. So they was all setting up and it was a gangster. Like It's almost like a gangster comedy film. Low budget, but yeah. you know. I mean, yeah, that's fine. So two hours before they was due to start the filming, uh, a guy called uh, Amir, he, he called me, he went, we've got a problem. We need another character. Uh -huh. I went, right, okay. He went, will you be like the bar owner? So I told my wife, she was like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, I think you've got the impression now, my wife keeps me very grounded. Yeah. What are you doing? Don't be stupid. I know, I'll do that. I'll put on a suit. So I, I look like something out of Reservoir Dogs. Black suit, yeah. white shirt, black tie, put me specs on. And um, yeah, I ended up doing a scene with Big Nasty where I literally abused him <laughs> for a, a couple of minutes. You know, there was different takes and whatever, but I got the impression he wasn't impressed at all. So that's where you would have seen that. So it was a film called... Um, Gangsters, gamblers, and geezers. So I'm going to put that picture of Adam and Big Nasty somewhere up here, oh, wherever no. you decide it, look, to put it. It's quite embarrassing, to be fair. But look, it's something I ticked off. It, I, I, I've been in a film. Yeah, it weren't, you it say, weren't a you can film. say that. You can I went that to a pre the premiere and that. It wasn't something that, you know, I look back and think, oh, I'm immensely proud of that. <laughs> it was something that I did. The opportunity arose and 
um, yeah, look, it's a bit of fun. And now Big Nasty don't like you. <laughs> well, I've never seen him since, but he's blown up. He's massive yeah, he's now. Doing, he's doing massive. So, like, you know, I'm not sure he's going to be too bothered about little old me. You know, I'll tag him in a picture if, if you put it up. Let's have a look. We'll see. And another thing you decided to do, you just before COVID, you started off a house music band, right? I think you could get the impression I like to try different things. Clearly. <laughs> and, and I've got certain things that I've always wanted to do. And once I get that in my mind, I will do it. Yeah. And I've always wanted a song, make a record or a song and have it on the radio. And a good friend of mine is a DJ for me, Lee Boy. He, uh, he's a house producer. Yeah. Now, one thing that I was always good at when I had the bar was I would make up the CDs, the promo CDs. Oh, really? And everyone that I made, everyone would go mad for. Yeah. When I let the DJs pick, not so. They're going to watch this and think I'm <laughs> cheeky, but not so. But the yeah. ones that I picked used to go mad. So I used to study all my crowds and, and what they was dancing to. Like, it was research, you yeah. know. So I had that in my mind, the sounds that I knew I wanted. And Lee Boy is a genius. Like, he, he, should, he should have had number one records. He's unbelievable. And we started working on a few things. And we got three tracks signed working on it before COVID. Uh, record label signed them. Um, Can we disclose what record label? No, but they were pretty okay, decent yeah. ones. They, they, right. they were decent because we got dropped by two of them. So I don't <laughs> want to give them um, you know, okay, too much fair enough. But we had three records that were signed. And we released one and it was on Kiss FM. But oh, did you? Got yeah, on there. Yeah, we play, uh, they played it on Kiss FM. It's all right. It's, yeah. listen, it's a, it's, What's it called? It's Only You. Okay. New, new Project. So I called it New Project, as in okay. New Bar. And um, again, I remember we was told when it was going to be played on Kiss FM. I had all my kids around the, the table, my wife, and then they announced the song, New Project, It's Only You, and the music came on. My kids started dancing. It was like <laughs> we'd won the lottery. You yeah. know what I mean? Good memories. But it, it's, it's a bit annoying because when COVID hit, yeah. My partner, Lee, he couldn't commit anymore. And we couldn't meet up. We couldn't get into studios. And it just sort of went away. Bought everything out kind of thing. But it's something, I've got so many ideas. Even over the last three years, I've been right. I'm going to drive him mad when we get together. Certain sounds, certain vocals. We're going to work on something. And I, I hope, you know, just again, just to get something released this year, just to, to do something, you know. I, yeah. I like new challenges. Something keeping you busy as well. Exactly that. And I asked you earlier on, Adam, what's new? What's going to happen in your future? And you was like, I don't know. Going with the flow. You want to fight with misfits? Yeah. You want to release songs? Yeah. You you've got all these things that you want to do, but you still don't think you've got much going on. No, no, no. I, I you, just like the thought of certain things. You know, I just um, I'm a bit of a dreamer, I suppose. But so far, you make yeah. it happen. Look, everything that I've said over the years that I was going to do, I've done. That's the main thing. No matter what anyone says, is You've sat here. No one can take that away from me. That's what I mean. I said I would open my own bar. You've done it. I've done it. And you smashed it as well. It was a success. Done well. It was. As yeah, much I mean, as you want to stay look, humble. People go in different directions. I've got friends that when I had the bars, they were struggling. Yeah. Or they was up the city. and whatever. Now they're smashing it. Yeah. And I'm not so COVID and that. But life goes in. Ro it's, it's a roller coaster. Ups and downs. I've know? always said everyone has their turn. Yeah. Everybody has their turn at doing su but what success is. I like it? to see other people doing well. There's too many people in this world who are jealous. That are jealous, horrible bastards. Yeah, too many of them. Now, I've got some friends that have absolutely hit off. Brings me happiness. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I love it. Because back when I was doing all right, they were struggling. Yeah. I like, and if, if you said to me, Adam, can you do a tweet for this? Just help me out there. It might help me. I'm not one of these people that go, no, or I want something for that. Yeah. Of course, it'd take me two seconds, Mike. So I like to help people. That's what I, I like to do. I, I want I want everyone to succeed. You know, I, I, I hate... I, I, that's one thing about Instagram and different things. Everyone's in competition. Everyone's in competition. Everyone's trying to... I, who's got this? Who's got that? No. Nah. Fucking chill out. I don't care what you've got. I'm happy. With You're content with I'm what content. you've got. And if I get more... Fantastic. So be it. It's good. It's a bonus. But I'm but not going to sit there and go, ah, oh, Mikey's got a Lamborghini. Right, I've got to do this to get a Lamborghini. It's not. And you know what? Half the people, they don't even think like that. Half the people yeah. think, Mikey's got a Lamborghini. Oh, you know what? 
I'm going to try and, you know, I'm going to copy what he's done or I'm going to, everyone has a spiteful way of looking at yeah. it. If people sat down and How said... How can I stop Mikey having a Lamborghini? It's true though. A lot yeah, of, yeah, if yeah. everyone sat down and said, oh, you know what? That person's doing so successful. I'm going to copy him and hopefully I can be in his position. Yeah. They don't. It's... How can I fuck his shit up yeah, so he yeah, loses a, that? Look, I'll, I'll get trolls on Twitter and things. Uh, during COVID, they was emailing the council, oh, the shit. police, you know, so much. It, to the end, when the council used to say to me, we're not listening, but letting you know this has been said, this yeah. is it. Like, horrible, horrible people. But like, that's, that is that's the world. life. That's the world we live in. That's life. And listen, I've loved having you on here. Thank you, much. Genuinely. First time I've actually ever met you yeah, as well. Yeah, it is. We spoke, but and yeah. We've had you. plenty of conversations. Tried to line this podcast up. And look, that's the power of social media yeah. as well. You text me one message. Mm. We said, if you want, I'll jump on. Yeah. A week later, we both sat here filming. It's and do you know why I said that? Go on. Because I was watching, again, I don't go onto people's pages on Instagram. If, yeah. If I go through and I, I listen and I was listening to, and I like the way you conduct your podcast. Very natural. I try to be. I, very I, friendly, very sort of, and I think it's very appealing to the viewer. And I watched certain things. I thought, you know what? I've wanted to, I've wanted to do my own podcast this year. I won't, I probably won't, but that's something that I might do. Yeah. But I looked at it and I thought, that's a good little platform. I like that. That's, that's decent. Thank you. Appreciate it. And I, tr I trust you. I put, not you to know stitch what? me up. Do you know what it is? It's not even that. Do you know, I, I released a podcast um, Edited up a podcast yesterday. Editor sent it to me. Sent it to one of the guests. Yeah. Sent it to him. I said, bro, please. I always say it to all my guests, check through it all. Yeah. I give them a whole week before I release it. Watch it a hundred times. Share it with your mums, dads, yeah. aunts, uncles. Share it. I want you to not say anything wrong because I don't want to get the phone call going, oh, can you delete it? I'd much yeah. prefer you have as two weeks. Watch it. Yeah, yeah. Get make right sure you're out. happy. Yeah. Because my, my, the only way that this podcast will succeed is if the guest is happy. Yeah. You'll go and if you're happy with the way it looks, you're going to share it a lot harder. Mm. If you're not happy, you're going to say, mm, I don't yeah. want people to watch that. So I sent it to him and he literally replied back with, bro, I don't need to watch it. He goes, I trust you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought, fuck me, man. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. that in itself means I'm doing something right. No, no, listen. It must do. If, if, very, if yeah. he's trusting me and that was a story where I'll mm. let you watch it later, but that's a story where it's very deep about his family. Yeah. I thought, Bloody hell, man. At least mm. he sat opposite me and thought, you know what? He trusts me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to me, that's more than enough. As long oh, as people are trusting me. Listen, I've enjoyed this. We've been here a while today as well. We've been here an hour and a half, hey, Philby. My phone's been on airplane mode the whole way. You know, I'm so getting a bit good, twitchy. Good, but good luck. Yeah. Well, listen, honestly, everyone who's watched this podcast, I know probably most of you are from Adam's platform. Some of you are from my platform. Make sure you all go and follow Adam on Twitter and let's help build his Instagram. How many followers are you on now? Oh, I've got about, I think I've got 10,000. Let's see if we can hit 20,000 followers for Adam on this That'd on his nice. Instagram That'd be nice. as a thank you for him coming on the show. Thank you. Listen, thank you for coming on. Guys, make thank sure you, you like, comment and subscribe and follow Adam on socials.